Mother's Day. And I'm extra special plus today because I have my mother here with me from New York. Actually, this is a uh, old Sunday school song that, that I learned when I was just a little shaver. Uh, I hope some of you know it, you know, sing along with it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Mobile phones, and we and, and uh, you know we'd have to dial long distance and the 
long distance calls are more expensive. I understand that Mother's Day historically was the leading day for long distance telephone calls back in the day. It's kind of funny because they also say that Father's Day was the leading day for collect long distance calls. <laughs> Seriously, I think that's probably documented somewhere. Anyway, happy Mother's Day to all of those of you to whom that applies. Like I said, I'm not going to read all that up there this morning. What else was I going to tell you? this day. Don't forget, now, two weeks from today, two weeks from today, we begin our summer schedule. And that means that the traditional service is at 9 o'clock in the morning, and this service is at 10.30. And I know you said, oh, shoot. And somebody said, cool, I get to sleep a little longer. So I hope you'll, I'm going to try to get you to cheat over to the pool. I get to sleep a little longer. But two weeks from today, on Memorial Day weekend, our first service is at 9, and this service will be at 10.30. We'll be some more reminders, but I just don't want you to forget that. This is indeed Mother's Day. This is also uh, the Good Shepherd Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter, called Good Shepherd Sunday. That will, the Good Shepherd idea will emerge loudly and clearly in our worship services today, especially in our scripture lessons. And also for us, this is Youth Sunday. All these guys and gals up here in the purple shirts are, those are uh, members of our youth group, and we love them, and they do a marvelous job. We've been doing a youth Sunday, I guess, ever since about 2011 or 12. I think we started that when Pastor Val was here, and I really appreciate uh, what you guys do for us on Youth Sunday. So, without further ado, oh, I'm sorry. Swallow. Perfect time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, Ray, when you were talking about Matt Dillon, I was, I was thinking of Matt Dillon, the actor. Oh, no, I'm thinking about that. that. <laughs> and Chester, remember Chester? And, and he died, I guess, and then uh, Festus. Festus was the name. Yeah. Festus was a TV guy. Was the TV guy. Chester was on TV. Ah, uh, Chester was on TV, too. Was oh, was he? Oh, yes. Before my son. <laughs> Before your time, maybe so. <laughs> Since this is Youth Sunday, uh, this is something we usually like to do for the children of God. <laughs>
Lord is our shepherd, our guide and protector. The Lord is our fire, our companion and friend. The Lord is almighty with wisdom and power. The Lord is present with honor and care. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving. Honor and might be to our God. Amen.
Shepherd God, around whose table we gather, we give you praise. You lead us the side still waters, restoring our souls with your comforting presence. You lead us in a path of righteousness for the sake of Christ Jesus, who died for our salvation. Even though we walk through valleys in which threat abide, we fear no evil. We shall dwell in your house all the days of our lives. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for that assurance we give you glory and honor. Hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus died. O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and be forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let us approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Let us confess our sin. To, to whom shall we address our confession, O God? But to you and to the Lamb, to whom salvation belongs. We confess, O God, that our evils are many, and often of our own making. We have walked many valleys darkened by doubt, cut off from the light of faith. Forgive and restore us, O Lord. Wipe away every tear and cleanse us in the blood of the Lamb, that our hearts, our words, and our actions may be pleasing to you, our righteous God, our good shepherd. Now let us confess our own personal and private sins. Amen. The psalmist writes, I admit, I admitted my sin to you, and I did not hide it. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. The psalmist concluded, You forgive the guilt of my sin. And the Lord is also for you and for me. Thanks be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's share the peace of Christ together.
Now in Java, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Java, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body, body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a servant Simon, a tailor. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A reading from Revelation 7, 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, 
and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who, is the, who are these robed in white, and where, are they, or where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows them. When, then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and they will thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. John 10, 22-30. At that time of the festival of, of the dedication that took place in Jerusalem, it was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the, so the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The work, the works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal, eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand, what my Father has given to me is greater than all, than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The definition of eternity is infinite and unending, just like God's love for us. Love itself is a broad subject, whether it be familial, romantic, or platonic. The types of love I have are my boyfriend and my family, specifically my two sisters who had helped me through my entire life. Just like how in John, Jesus, Jesus proclaimed that no one can take his followers or the love he has for them. After the Jews asked Jesus if he is Christ, Jesus replied that he did tell them the answer, but they did not believe him because they aren't his sheep. His sheep follow him, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. He will never leave us, even when we stray, just like how my family is always there for me. Whether it be the family I was born into, or the family I found through my friends and the church. And it is the love for my family and God that has made me who I am today. For this I will always be grateful. And as Christians, we will always have God's love. And the knowledge that he will always welcome us back, even when we do stray from the path he has provided. In my own life, when the path seemed less clear, my faith would continue with renewed evidence of God's love for me personally and those around me. As Christians, we should always trust in the eternity of God's love. Likewise, another verse from the book of John states, I will not leave you as orphans. Think about that verse this week and how Jesus made us that promise. Being happy is not the only purpose in life. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, and to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Tabitha was so good at helping others around her. She made herself a core part of her community, and those she helped were devastated when they lost her. Peter was sent by God to save Tabitha using prayer. The whole town was sad about her death. Peter brought her back to life. Every Christian has someone in their life to save or help. My grandmother, I call Mimi, is a core part in my life and our family, and we have we would be devastated if we lost her. There was one point we almost lost her, but like Peter, we prayed and prayed for Mimi to stay in our lives. Our prayers were answered, and we were able to keep this very important person in our lives. Many people have lost or are close to losing a very important person in their life. Who's really important to you and how would your life be without them?
it's going to be hard to see. But this is a Peruvian community cross, and it was created to represent the 12 tribes of Israel coming together under Christ to further the community of God. This sculpture reminds me that in times of trouble and pain, we as Christians must fully give ourselves to God and this church to strengthen in our bond with the Father. This is a message I believe we should all appreciate. This church is a community and we are stronger together under its physical and metaphorical roof. In the beginning of Revelation, foreboding images of war, destructive beasts, and terrifying horsemen force intense persecution on the children of God. But in Revelation 7, John reassures that which we already know. The tribulations of our lives will be rewarded with, a, your, with our eternal salvation in heaven. In that time of persecution, the Christians converge to realign with God and to strengthen their love for Him. God washed their robes white and led His people to eternity. In my own life, tribulation came from choosing and following through with those choices. In the past couple years, I've had to make many choices that will affect the rest of my life. I had to pick a college to go to and what major to focus on. I had to say goodbye to good friends and family. And most importantly, I had to fully rely on God to guide me through all of my trials. In the end, the things that led me to my decisions did come from God. I believed I could do the best for me and those around me by going to Pensacola and studying business, engineering, and economics. The University of West Florida spoke to my heart, and I truly feel that I will have the time of my life on the campus for the next few years. I am looking forward to my new path God has laid for me. God washed my robes and led me to the path He has made for me. I believe my future will be planned out for me by God, and I will keep on the path God has allotted for me. God has led me, and I am listening, mostly. <laughs> I've tried my best to put my best self forward for God to be a sheep to the Lamb of God. This church has done so much for me and this youth group. I am eternally thankful to all the, all the helpful mentors this community has provided for me. It is actually impossible to thank every individual person that has led my journey through faith and life, but I am so thankful that every single one of those people did come into my life. They formed me and led me to the right paths. In youth group, we like to say we're a family. And this congregation truly is an extension of that family. You have supported us and allowed us to do great work for God. Through, through youth group, I've been to five states and met countless amazing people. In Nashville, Vienna, Charleston, and Orlando, I and this youth group did work for God like fixing buildings, clearing yards, and assisting in nursing homes. All while working with and meeting incredible people from around the country some of whom I still speak with today. All of the travels and fun we've had here were only possible because of the support this congregation has afforded us. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for making this youth group one of the best parts of my life. And as my journey continues, I will always remember the people that made this church a home and the things this church is talking about. Thank you.
traditional Mother's Day song. And fortunate to have uh, my son Rick and John play with us today.
Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please take your seats. This is the time when we share joys and concerns and then go into prayer. I want to, uh, Marge, come and join me. Oh, you've got the microphone. Good. Uh, yeah. But before that, Brian and Emmy, come and stand between Marge and me. At our May meeting of session, which will be on the 21st of May, we're going officially to receive the uh, resignation of Emmy and Brian. And that's a, a concern, I mean, in a way, I mean, that's something that we'll have to deal with in, in our church and in our personnel committee. But it's an enormous joy, too, because you see, Bry and Emmy work respectively at two different Publix grocery stores. And the Publix people have recognized in, in them things that we knew all along. And so these two are ascending the ladder at Publix. They're going to go full time, and each is considering maybe making Publix their career. And so it's kind of neat to have a career opportunity to sort of knock on your door and present itself to you. And so even though we, we will miss you sorely, we are really proud of you. Now, Bry, we've raised Bry. I mean, he came to us about something like that. And I'm here to say we've done a pretty good job of raising him, in my humble opinion. And Emmy, we didn't get her quite as early, but they, she's a girl and she's much more teachable than a boy. <laughs> And so we have, uh, we have done a good job with her as well. We love you too. Thank you, thank you very much. Did you want to, yeah, Emmy wants to uh, say, be sure the mic's on. <laughs> I just want to, uh, I just want to say. Wait, wait, is it on? Okay. It's Lucille's. Oh.
that part between the old part of the building and the new part of the building, we have a picture of Tate at nine months of age and Sunshine at nine weeks of age, nose to nose, and they're about exactly the same size. <laughs> I need to find that picture and send it. You don't want it, but I'll send it to your mom and dad. So, bless your heart, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Give a hug. Bless you, bless you. Hugs, bless you, bless you. All righty. Go sit down. Thank <laughs> you. 